What is going on, you guys? It is Scott from Fly Rides, and I am here today with a review that a lot of you have been waiting for, myself included. I have got a 2020 Specialized Turbo Creo SL Expert Evo for you. Boy, that is a mouthful, and so is this bike, whatever that means. Specialized has finally gotten you guys covered. You have been heard, your voices, they sang through, and we have gotten the Turbo Creo line. We got the gravel model, so of course I had to try it off-road, which is probably why I got this answer from our sales manager, Jay, when I asked if I could test ride it. Jay, can I ride that Specialized Creo? Definitely not. Please? Never. Okay. But we did it anyway because we had to let you guys know how it was. So we'll break into the ride experience in just a minute. But first, let's talk about specs, baby. Let's talk about specs, baby. So a lot of the questions surrounding the specs on this bike are, of course, about the Specialized SL 1.1 motor. Um, it is pretty cool. Uh, so it's extremely small. You're going to be able to get a lot of power out of this thing even though it is a smaller and not like as heavily torqued out motor so it's 240 watts is what it puts out and then it's 35 newton meters of torque as you guys probably know this motor is proprietary to specialized so this is a motor that they developed it is incredibly small incredibly lightweight all right so guys we want to show you shimano motor for scale here so the Shimano is like a smaller motor too, right? Yeah, it's one of the smaller ones out there. I think it's about the same size no, or way smaller? Way smaller. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we're doing crank to crank right here. They're, I mean, we're pretty big. I'm sure heavier. I'm not saying this is bad, but dang, specialized. What is this mystery motor? It does feature a magnesium housing and weighs in at 4.3 pounds, which is incredibly light. Of course, here in the States, it is going to be a class three bike, so it goes up to 28 miles per hour. But I have to say, I think this is my new favorite in terms of decoupling. You really can't feel when this motor turns off. So it, you, know, you get to that 28 mile per hour point and you can easily push past. Hector and I both got up to 32, 33, like with no problem whatsoever. There's a 320 watt hour battery that is integrated into the frame. You also have the opportunity for a range extender, which is gonna be a 160 watt hour battery that sits on uh, the bottle cage, essentially. It looks just like a water bottle and weighs just over one kilogram or 2.2 pounds if you're too lazy to go to Google. The last thing about the battery that is very important and I think extremely cool, it is not 36 volts, it's gonna be 48 volts, which means that you're going to be able to charge up more quickly than on a 36 volt system. I like this because even though Specialized does rate this bike saying that it can get up to 80 miles in range, we were not able to do our own range tests. And of course at 320 watt hours, I do have to wonder if that 80 miles is reasonable. Um, that's a pretty low amount of watt hours. So I can't officially say if that's a, you know, if their spec at 80 miles is correct or not, but that is what they say. Either way, that range extender is gonna be a nice option along with the 48 volt uh, battery is gonna be helpful for recharging quickly if you need to just stop off and put a little bit of battery life into your bike. Further specs, for comfort, you have the Future Shock 2.0, which is going to be right on your stem. You can tighten that in or loosen it up. So especially for the gravel bike, this is gonna be nice because if you're going off-road, you're gonna want a little bit of suspension, but it doesn't take away anything in terms of efficiency. You are also going to get a Shimano Dior XT 11-speed derailleur on a cassette that is 11 to 42 teeth, and it's DI2 shifting. Um, this DI2 shifting does charge separately from the motor, so you need to keep that in mind. Make sure you recharge that DI2 shifting. Um, and it's also going to be a 46 tooth chain ring in the front. This system is coupled with Shimano Ultegra hydraulic disc brakes and levers. So your shifters are going to be Ultegra. The derailleur is uh, Shimano Dior XT. Doesn't matter, guys. Uh, it's still both very, very high end stuff. They're also giving you on the gravel bike a dropper seat post from X-Fusion so that off-roading is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, you, obviously, this is more of a cyclocross gravel bike, so having that stability to go a little bit lower is probably going to be extremely useful to you. We are, of course, also looking at a carbon wheel set here. 
Um, it's tubeless ready. You're also getting Pathfinder tires. That's gonna be a nice off-road gravel tire for you. The cockpit is extremely minimalist on this. Uh, you don't get a display. Um, so your display is essentially just gonna be on the top tube. That's how you know how much battery you have left and how you can change assistance levels. Or you can connect to the Mission Control app and control everything through there if you wanna do that as well. So of course, you're probably not here just to listen to me talk about the specs, even though that is what just about every other review does. Now that I think about it, you know, not talking about anyone in particular. So we went ahead and rode this, even though, as I mentioned, I wasn't supposed to. All right, we'll check back in with Jay later. I bet he'll let me ride that bike, right, Jay? Uh, still nice. But Hector and I both stole away so that we could try this bike out. Hector's gonna be featured more in the ride section of this video because to be perfectly honest, he just looks better in Lycra. Plus, all of my outfits are for triathlon. And yes, that is a brag. This bike is great. Uh, it's, it's first of all, pretty stable, pretty powerful. So looking at the stats prior to hopping on it, I was like, well, a little skeptical, but because it's so lightweight, has all that power, low center of gravity, this thing climbs like a mule, so sturdy. I, I'm loving it, I'm loving it a lot. So I've been actively riding road for about 10 years and yeah, whether that's just riding weekend warrior type of riding or uh, getting into some crits, but yeah, I've just road riding on aluminum, not too much on the carbon frames, but everything's been pretty much analog until now. So the handling is there. I, it feels like a regular road bike. Like I said, this is the gravel version, so it has a wider tires. Uh, it was really good when we were climbing up on that gravel road add plenty of bite. I didn't feel unstable or like I was slipping or pedaling through. The motor, again, I was on level two uh, for the most part, so I wasn't slipping by pushing the power down. It felt great. I feel real powerful. <laughs> so the suspension, the suspended uh, stem is actually pretty cool. So it absorbed a lot of all the bumpiness, kind of like the bumps that I was going through right now. It absorbs it a lot. Um, only has a few millimeters of travel, but that's all you really need when you're on a road bike. And we have a dropper post as well. So going down that hill, again, only a few millimeters of travel for the dropper post, but it's all that, that you really need on this type of bike. You get low, you get behind that saddle, and you can comfortably and confidently descend uh, any trail. I mean, you still got to work, still got to put some power into it, but that specialized motor really does give you a kick. Like right now we're about to climb. I'm on a nice, good, comfortable gear and I'm not on the highest turbo mode and I'm still pretty comfortable, but like Chris Froome said, just keep spinning. So we've already talked a little bit about the ride. And so it begins. My mission to end all cars so I don't have to do two takes. <laughs> you may have won this round. I've already talked about how well the motor decouples. I really cannot stress that enough. I also will say um, it is about as loud as a Shimano Steps or a Bosch. So it's not the most quiet motor on the market, I wouldn't say. Uh, but again, in terms of what it's offering you power-wise, I was very impressed, especially because of the size. There are two other Turbo Creo bikes. You've got the S-Works Turbo Creo SL and the Specialized Turbo Creo SL Expert. Both of those bikes are going to be more road focused, so they're gonna be more for the road, whereas the one we got to test ride is designed more for gravel. Traditionally, between road bikes and cyclocross or gravel bikes, there is gonna be a little bit of a geometry difference. There isn't on these particular bikes, they are just specced out differently. 
but the gravel option certainly is not lacking in performance off-road. On the S-Works model, you are getting some upgrades that are pretty significant, I would say. Um, big differences are that you're going to get no dropper seat posts. It is more of a road bike exclusively. Better wheel set. You're also getting some more road-specific tires. On the model behind me right here, you're getting 38C tires, so pretty wide, nice for some gravel, whereas on the road model, you're getting 28s instead. You also on the S-Works get Dura-Ace brakes and Dura-Ace shifters. So it's worth the upgrade if you're looking for a higher end road bike. But if you want to go gravel, this one is the way to go. So that leads us to who this bike is for. This is an incredibly high end spec'd out bike. There are plenty of acoustic bikes that cost around the same range. So I would say if you're a road cyclist who's looking for something to ride on days off or on lighter days, this is going to be a great option for you. Maybe if you're a person who's trying to get back into the sport, it also is going to be great for you. Or if you just are tired of uh, doing your own power up every single hill every single time, you want to extend your rides a little bit, um, it's going to be a great bike for you as well. I definitely think I would use the Mission Control app or something, some sort of power meter to have a little bit more of control over my display and kind of uh, be able to know my range and stuff like that. Um, I did find myself wanting a little bit of a display on there, but again, that's something you can't upgrade. This bike is designed, Specialized has moved towards this position for the last couple years now to be low profile and basically fit in on trails and on roads is how uh, Specialized has gone with their bike. So minimalist cockpits, but I probably would upgrade to the display personally. I really enjoyed having the dropper seat post on here, even on the road. I thought it was nice to be able to just sit back. It makes the bike, it just makes it different than a regular road bike is what I liked about it. And it is different than a regular road bike. These are not road bikes, they're electric road bikes. So it's nice to have something that kind of sets it apart. Pedals, you're gonna switch out. I clipped in, uh, you guys are probably gonna wanna clip in too. Most people I think who ride this bike, again, are gonna be road cyclists. So if you don't have a good pair of uh, clipless pedals, go get some because you're gonna want some for this bike. Don't, don't ride flat pedals on this bike, you look like a nerd. In a complete shock to absolutely zero people, the design aspects on this bike are perfect. Uh, the color is beautiful, it looks great in person. The internal routing of all the cables and the wiring is incredible. Um, I, it's, it's a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful bike. I will say you definitely want to have a good relationship with the shop that you buy it at because they are going to put some time into this bike up front. It took a while for us to build up, no problem. You know, it's a high quality bike. We were happy to put the time in because we wanted to ride something incredible, but make sure that, uh, you know, treat your guys right. Of course I'm biased because we're a bike shop, but you should be nice to everybody guys. So that is our review of the 2020 Specialized Turbo Creo SL Expert Evo. I almost run out of breath every single time I say it. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this bike, if you're gonna be grabbing one. Uh, let me know if I left anything out or if you have any questions for me about the ride experience that I can answer more specifically for you. I'm also happy to do that. We will see you guys next time. Until then.